Latoya, tell me a little bit about you. So my name is Latoya Jane. You don't sound right, man. So, you don't sound right. Latoya Jane. All right. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Oh. And um, I'm a singer, recording artist. Okay. I've been doing this from a young age. My father is Jamaican. He lives here. I have Jamaican background. So I came here to connect with my roots again and be a big part of this project. Uh -huh. This huge project that I'm a big part of right now. Okay. So which part of Jamaica you come from? Portmore. Portmore? Yeah, country girl. Uh, that's not country. country. Well, me never hear say country. It's well, like, you know, the third city. Yeah, Kingston, Romania, Portmore. Me never hear you not about me. You want Montego be the second city. Yeah, but Portmore is the third name. What? Because you have enough people in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. Oh, so you guys all have to come from Portmore? No. No, that's not no. What? What? Quarter million is not no. No. Okay. It's a suburb. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a suburb. Okay, we take that away. And so, what are you doing? My name is CK. Hey, what's your job? What's your name? So, my name is CK. My name is CK. Um, so my name is CK, my real name is Clara Kawa, so I just use my initials. Okay. So I call myself an Afro-American, that being my parents are African from Tanzania. I was born in the U.S. and I grew up here in Jamaica. Oh, Lord, why you mix up You mix up, you mix up. You mix up, you mix up. You mix up, Afro-Jamaican. Yes. You don't want any that. Yeah, that's why I created it. Okay. That's what we're creatives, right guys? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what we do, we create. Right. And um, so I came on the scene, I did. A uh, cover of True Colors produced by Carl Morrison. Uh, my brother Quick Keys is a producer, and then I did my first single called Party Up in Here. And then that led me to do a collab with Conscience. Hey. My body of the year, so. It's sound a little bit better now. Let's call it. And Tandra. I'm not an artist, so you can. Oh, what do you mean, I'm not an artist? Then what do you do with Because you... it was a spotlight camera on, I'm here. <laughs> well, then we'll try to come back. Because you don't like you cover on Kingston. You don't cover on St. Mary. I bet you St. Mary. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, you, don't, you don't really look like country. You look like St. Mary. Wow. Up in the suburbs. Up in the, the suburbs. suburbs. Now, you look like a suburb. I tour from Toronto, actually. Oh. You get an accent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Canada born, but my parents are from Jamaica. So I'm back here. I'm doing work, doing lots and lots of work with amazing artists. Okay. Um, uh, I guess I'd say I originated half. From Mandeville and spent a whole lot of time in Kingston. I feel like Kingston owns me now. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, and, and, and this is Minori Russell, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we used to play our music every Saturday morning. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, yes! We deserve to be in love. And you sing that one, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, I have got most of that little bit done for me for any year because yes. Eddie, uh, Eddie run Jamaica Drug Festival. You know, oh, you know nice. when you go to Drug Festival? Yes. I'm running to Florida and I'm running to DC and. So yeah, we'll do something for me, for me yeah, here. Most you know. definitely. Okay. So, look at you for me. I know you're hurting inside, although you try your best to hide. Mm. I see the tears in your eyes, and I know why. God gave no one the right to ever beat you. So it's wrong and never right when he mistreats you. Oh, you deserve to be loved. Yeah, yeah, fine. And you deserve to be treated like a queen. Hey. Appreciated. Stop, 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 stop. 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 Yeah, you better do what I'm fine so that I can have good. Oh, ah, just good? Yeah, good, just better, less. Best. Jesus. So, which part do you come from? I'm a Kingstonian, born and grown in Kingston. You know? My parents are uh, both from Jamaica. Nobody's African or. Oh, no, Kennedy, you're not an American. Mix up the you're, you're exactly. Oh, you're right. You're there, you're so. Yeah, man, I want to get you in a Rasta part. <laughs> <laughs> So, so the the um the name of the project. Tell me, who, who wanted to tell me about the name of the project? Mm, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So, um, having all this talent under one roof, yes, and putting together this project, I realized it wasn't going to be like some common everyday sort of title. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a lot of debate. There was a lot of going back and forth. Do we like this, guys, ladies? Do we like this? This, not this. Yeah. Um, and then big woman thing was the thing that just you know it resonated. 
Um, and a lot came from that. So, you know, big woman thing because we wouldn't look like on 18. What are our books? Don't worry about it. But that big woman thing is not an age thing, you know, it's a state of mind. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm going with the new Big woman thing straight across the board for the 13 year old young lady coming up straight up to the 56 year old is a state of mind. About um, big woman thing and what is it that we're projecting as um, through big woman thing? What we are projecting? Life experiences. Life experience. Each one of us has come on the project to basically, well, Tanja requested, I need a song from you that speaks truth, where you live your truth, where somebody can hear it and learn mm -hmm. and get some insight and grow from it and feel like they can connect. So, like for my song called I Found Me, I wrote it from a place of, I want to say the transition from bitterness to actually gratitude for all the people. Relationship, the man don't broke your heart, and you just you're tired of being bitter. But instead of being angry at him, I just wanted to thank him for every single gift that I've got from the pain that he you, you still love him. If, I, if, I, you know, I, good, good love, but you, you, will you still love him like when you broke up your heart and thing? You still love him. Full, full love. Ah, full, ah, full, ah, full, ah, full, ah, full, full, ah, full, 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 and that's what I was saying, my final self. Oh, okay. I'm always up. Okay, right. Okay. So you're not about you're not this up. No, 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 no. It cut off. It cut off. But I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for it because although it was a love lesson, it was a life lesson. And I feel like I'm not the only person in the world who felt that way. But some of us feel as if when, you know, the person hurt us, whoever it is, I'm not talking about just intimate love. I'm talking about people who just hurt you. You have to thank them for the emptiness that they made you feel because that's when you thought you got closer to God. You have to thank them for the lies that they give you because that's how you know the true people who remain with you, who stayed. And, you know, you, you get closer to yourself when you start to look at, you know, the, the lessons to the pain and, and, and the gifts that you were given and how much you develop and how much stronger and wiser you are. You begin to develop and discover who you are that being you. That is really, really, really good. Really, 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 really. No, no, your man is so to mix up. <laughs> I am Leo Gillen coming to you from Follow Back Coming. Yes. In 2018, the, the tour continues. So we go up in, in the topic country. Yes. And tired like a heck. Mm. But um, Prof asked me to come and come to a good jam session with yeah. you. And I am here. And I want to hear more, hear more, hear more the mix up thing. Why am I going to mix up? I'm going to have a full love thing. Why am I going to have a full love? You know, you look at me like you have a full love. No, man, you look at the full love. You have a full love thing. Well, I mean, let me tell you, you are, yeah, wait a minute, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you tell me your purpose on the, um, the, the, this, this mission. So, um, back in Toronto, I'm like from the area that is equivalent to Tivoli Gardens, the baddest area in Toronto. And I used to run a gang back in the days um, there and do some bad stuff. So I went to prison for a long time. And um, when you were just talking about age, I have a 21-year-old son. Oh, you so, do? Um, yeah. So, what is you look like a friend you want to say. What is this? So, um, secrets. I went to the secrets. I went to the secrets. The big yeah. It's all right. It's all right. No, she got my back. So, I've been through a lot of things in life, and um, I had to change my lifestyle at one point in my life when I got closer to God. And it was like crazy how people reacted from my community. Like, if they're saying all kinds of things about me. I was going mad, all mm -hmm. kinds of things, just because I wanted to change for the better. Yeah. And that's what that song's about, because also there's also people like even in your family that just want to keep you where you were, you yeah. know? Yeah. So this song's talking about like getting out of that and like how the devil will try you when mm -hmm. he lives right around the way, but it doesn't matter, you still got to bust through. Mm -hmm. when, when, when did you grow up? Um, when did you say that you grew up? You know what? Both of my, so I have two brothers that got shot. One of my brothers got shot 18 times and he's still alive. But my next brother died six years ago. He got killed. He got okay. shot. And I think um, after he got shot, I think that's when I really wanted to change. Because I feel like I wanted to retaliate and I feel like that's a sickness. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. like, it's just toxic energy that you have to let out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's that. not fair that you're going to go take it out on somebody and repeat the cycle so yeah. I literally seen if I had done something my son getting killed and I think that was the vision where I said okay you know what let me just put this anger into music and see where it yeah. can take me because I was always scared to sing and for people and stuff and then I said okay you know what let me just let me just let me just do this so bust the tune bust the tune bust the tune bust the tune you want to hear the tune 
The devil go try me, yeah. The devil go try me, yeah. Whoa. He live right around the way. He live right around the way. Whoa. I saw like that you you connect with us. Yeah. 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 Really nice. mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you Africa was such a good meeting. Tell me, tell me about your big one thing. My, wow, my big one thing was probably this experience. Actually, um, it found me in a time in my life where I was just this is a big shift. I just lost my mother. I wanted to give back to music. I've been doing this for like fifteen years. I was teaching audio engineering in Toronto. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to do something different. And it led me on a plane to come to Jamaica where I didn't really realize there was this much music down here. And I and, and, and I mean, I come to Jamaica like every year. Right? Yeah. And I just, it never occurred to me. There's all these studios right around the corner from my grandparents' house. Yeah. And so anyways, I came down, I was hooked immediately and you know started working with like everybody in the industry. But I can't see I really connected with the the industry and the way that I, I felt like, yeah, I, I want to be doing this. I, and I know this industry, I know how it stays, right? right? I know that um, you will you can get lost, you can get a little bit sidetracked. Yes. Um, other things will come and just divert you from your plan. Right. And so this just sort of fell in my lap in a way that felt very organic and that's really the only way to get my attention. Yes. It's not money, it's not certain things, it's, you know. Um, and this just felt like a, like, like a really, intentful thing to do. Mm -hmm. So when the group initially got together, I saw all these people in the room and they're like, yo, what are we gonna do? Because we got this opportunity from Free with Jamaica yes. to, you know, yes. um, form the group called Girls. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, we're like, we met a few times and we're like, yo, what are we gonna do, what are we gonna do? And I was like, you know what, we should do an album. Right, and so from there, just so that's how the, the girls' album come come right. about. Right now, I'm an audio engineer, right? So I know yes. how to mix, master, do all. Don't tell me not, you can't sing. You know, you know, you that's what I can't sing. I cannot sing. I cannot. You want a tune? You want a tune from him? You want a tune? Your your sister in them. Your sister in them all all back. She she just tell me say she got your back. That is what I want. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. What's a tune? What's a tune? You can't be okay. I know what's a tune. Her voice is gone. <laughs> yeah. So, your yeah. next time, she'll give you a track. Right, 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 right. You are so forgiven now just because just she needs to have your back. Right. You know? <laughs> Minori, yes, I want your your big woman story. A, a, big, a woman. big woman, right? Big woman, 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 as a platform to speak and then when I started when, when I started hearing or the conversation started about that album I fell in love with the concept of females coming together for an entire all female compilation especially when out here um, or in general females are perceived to always be so right, and against yeah understand so yeah, yeah. to be a part of a project like this and then to get the opportunity to write the song that I wrote it was I think the creator is a way of deliberately placing us into situations that we desire most and the fact that I use my music to uplift and this is something that I've always wanted to see because it's changing the narrative and I'm all about change. It was a no-brainer for me. Okay, that's very nice. Um, while on the, the um, Philly Jamaica project, I also work with uh, Prof on a couple of projects mm -hmm. and one of the things that I, I respect most about the project was mm -hmm that it, it was standing up for women's yes, rights. Yeah. It was standing up for abuse of women. It was stand, standing up against abuse of women and, and oh. bringing some kind of awareness yeah. to the whole thing about men beating up on women or mm -hmm. men mm -hmm. you know, sexually abusing young yeah. girls and yeah, so forth. So I, 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 need your, I need your thoughts on, on that. Um, so give me, you know, you, if you have any experience and you want to share it, it's a way of bringing that out now because people want to hear from you. You are you are artists and you should not be afraid of talking. So if you have something that you want to tell, please um, let me know or tell me how you feel about the whole thing. 
Uh, uh, my you background in Toronto is social work. So I have worked in um, the field of um, community work for about 14 years. And I just recently left. And I think it goes a little bit further than that. I think it goes to like parenting. Because I used to say that it wasn't the parents' fault that certain things happened in our culture, our community. But like, after raising my son and seeing things that his friends were okay to do and stuff like that, I was just like, wow, it goes back to the root. So if we can't clean and fix the root, it's just, I don't think it could be, I'm just, like, I'm serious. I don't think it could be fixed because, like, the women are already bent, the children are curved, so they're, they're easier to straighten, but they're not, they're, they're, they're bent now. They're getting bent because mm -hmm. there's no love at homes. Mm -hmm. Like, there's none. From the like, jungle. back in Canada, like, the girls fly out here, like, they don't, they neglect their youths, like, they keep breedings. The older one has to take care of the younger one, so they breed quick so they can get out of the house. Like, it's just, it, that stuff, I think, has to cut out first before yeah. we ever try to save anything else. That's just So the men got that apart, that's the Of course, because first. there's no more, is there any more bedtime? You hear children in the background of phones, like, up till, like, 11, 9. Nobody prays, prays before they yeah. eat their food. There's no more... Saturday no, soup. There's no, no more Saturday, no, there's there's Saturday morning yeah. cleanup. Yeah. There's no more Saturday yeah. morning yeah. cleanup. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We don't yeah. yeah. wash your panties yeah. no more. There's yeah. no more. Yeah. Our culture is dissolving yeah. a little bit, I feel. It's because just I, remember, I remember as a little boy that, that talk about Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. My mom used to yes. we get up and she says, and we have, have to move every chair, every table, <laughs> and <laughs> everybody has to be a part of that community. Yes. 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 Let's see, see you're, you're right on tap now, so give me your thoughts. Um, coming into this program was actually, or this project, I should say, was actually timely for me because, as I was saying to um, Latoya, back there, I've done music, I was in music probably started like five years ago. I know I want to reemerge, but I want my journey to be more of a testimony. So I am an advocate for mental health. I am an advocate for child abuse because I either know people or have experience with these things. So to be able to share my story, which I would speak to is more emotional abuse. It is a still form of abuse. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it is. is. In fact, right? more, well, more yeah. bigger than anything else. Yeah. So yeah. here it is. No, you're not. You might not be getting the thump, the lick, the whatever. But what you have is somebody who has oppressed you mm -hmm. and who you have, who you, who you love more than you even love yourself because as a woman you're you're you are told that you're stronger when you have a man beside you as opposed yeah. to standing on your own but it comes from a deeper issue meaning that you are silenced so even now like i have a five-year-old niece where she's she's very outspoken she's my little hero you know because she said what she feel it don't matter who it is whether her father grandfather teacher or whatever she speaks her thoughts but i recall i'm so amazed by it because at three four five it was shh, the adult is right and even when they're doing wrong and abusing mm -hmm. the children, they cannot speak because they have no voice. Mm -hmm. So you know, growing up and that being entrenched and rooted in you, who's searching for a voice, yeah. who's being suppressed, it's the hardest thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you, at 28, 29, 30, you just have find a voice to say, no, by this time, yeah. you don't abuse, you don't see this. Mm -hmm. If you have a child, they're seeing that it's the cycle all continues. Yeah. So I'm saying, for me now, when you have children, as much as we just complain about the fact that there's no rules or there's no structure, mm -hmm. I believe that you should empower them to just be. Allow them to speak their truth and be their truth and and and, and, and be confident mm -hmm. with themselves and be self-aware. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so there's that aspect, but specifically for this, I'm mean, speaking about women, it's been an advocate for just women empowerment and people believing in themselves and um, self-awareness and as I said, child abuse and mental health abuse and mm -hmm. I mean mental health awareness and um, people are coming out now talking about that. You hear a lot more people, especially celebrities, speaking about being depressed. Mm -hmm. And the stigma behind it is, oh my God, why was the person? She's a she did my no, so she my oh, okay. <laughs> Worse when you hear her say, worse when you hear her say, she even take, she was on medication. Yeah, yeah. Or worse when you, so who am I? When I go and see, the, when you see you deal with the biggest or the big, biggest like that, who am I who's probably undergoing the same thing, who's two seconds from overdosing because I want to, um, to kill myself mm -hmm. or two seconds away from pulling a gun because I don't feel my life is worth it mm -hmm. simply because there's no love in the home, if that's your thing. Or even if there is, you just don't love yourself enough to feel like you're worth it. Yeah. And you stay in these same abusive situations 
enduring it because that tough love, that abuse that you get, at least he loves me. He kisses me after mm -hmm. and says, I love you. Mm -hmm. He stays. He does this, but he yeah. always comes back. That must be love, right? Yeah. Because love endures all, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's a little bit of pain with love, but love endures all. You, I remember. Do you, do you preach? You know what that happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. We have a tendency to say, listen, when I love you and when I'm passionate about you and you mean something to me, I go in, you can say sister mode. Because I I just sorry, I just want to see you I just want to see you happy. I just want to see you strive. I just want to see you uplift. And if that's my way of helping, then fine. If I'm using music as a vehicle or a channel in which yeah. to mm -hmm. give this story or preach or give you or empower you, I take it. So that's what I want my journey. To really be about that's that's mm -hmm. beautiful. That's that's mm -hmm. beautiful. Can you not give me a high five? Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you need some mix of that. Look here, it's me more. I know them loving us. I'm happy to try with them all. Naturally, overly, I love them. You're gone. You're gone. You're gone. All right. All right. Yeah, you take take it, take it, take the pulpit. Take it. All right. First of all, can you just remember what the question? I have to remember what the question is. Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, we're talking about the, the um, gender-based violence, we're talking about uh, um, physical and, and uh, mental abuse, uh, emotional abuse from men and women. Uh, we'll talk about the women, them, we, we, we beat the man them too, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so go ahead. Alright, so my thing is, and I think Tanya Stevens said it best in one of her songs, she said, we tend to treat the symptoms and we don't try to cure the disease. No, yeah. no, because yeah. Like Latoya said, and like CK said, without even saying it a while ago, all of these are root problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? It is. It is. It is something that is. It is a. It is a form of socialization. Yeah. I am from the community of Waterhouse. Waterhouse. Yes. Okay. These 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 young men. They're growing up in the culture, especially nowadays, where it is a female is now calling. This is what is happening. A female is now. It is okay for her to call herself a bitch. Can mm -hmm. I say that? Yes. Yes. Please. Please after you've said it, but okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> not, not, not even just food and is it like everything? Yes. It's, it's everything that we're taking, mm -hmm. we're taking on a yeah, daily basis. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it, nothing it, that enriches it, it, you, and it's really more to just keep it just relatively calm and not blow up at other people but yet still everybody just fights in wars and it's constant like little wars and, and then the family war with your neighbor mm -hmm. war at work mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. every, it's, it's a Every man I want to sink into something that you said where women are calling themselves big or a